What's up everybody and welcome to another Logic Pro X tutorial slash quick tip. I am Cloromo. Today I'm going to be talking about the Match EQ and in my opinion Match EQ is one of Logic Pro X's best kept secrets. You're going to see right away why I mean by that. So let's go right into the tutorial window in the interest of keeping this as a quick tip. So just to make it easier for you to follow me, I have a project that has a track with an Apple loop. You can find it in the library. If you can't, if you cannot, please make sure that you have downloaded every sound from the library. The tempo, everything regarding it is irrelevant. The only thing that we care is the sound. So before I explain to you what Match EQ does, let's just listen to that Apple loop as is. And please remember that sound because it's going to be important. Although I'm going to show it to you as I go. Just get a quick idea how that sounds. And how does Match EQ help us with something like this or with anything for that matter in like Logic Pro X? Match EQ is an EQ that serves to analyze a signal and store it as a template. So it takes that signal, takes that frequency, which is known as the fingerprint EQ of that signal and stores it. And then you can give it a reference signal, some other, uh, let's say, an, in, in this case, another uh, little break, which with just a kick that I wanted to sound this to sound as. And you let the match EQ also analyze that reference signal and then it creates like a composite or a result of both of them in an EQ curve that you can then apply, for example, to this uh, break here or Apple loop. And it's going to sound more like that reference signal. So it's not going to be a 100% perfect match, but it's going to be close enough and it's gonna give you a, or open you to a lot of possibilities of what you can do with your sound and it's also gonna let you learn a little bit more about EQing and uh, you know if you have problems or if you struggle with that then using a reference material is gonna help you get a little bit or get a few steps ahead in your game and, and make your, your sounds better. So we have listened to that and now I'm going to access the match EQ. So you go to your plugins, you go to EQ, match EQ. So this is how it looks. And I'm not going to explain every parameter on its own, but I'm going to show you how to achieve what I just explained. And it's going to, um, what I'm going to show you, in my opinion, is the easiest way to do it, which is just dragging and dropping the source material for each of these. So this is like a flow map here. You have your current sound, which is what I have here. You have a reference sound, which is what you want to mimic, you, like I want to say it. And then the EQ curve is a result of both. So the current one, the current sound is just this. Apple loop. I'm going to drag it. It's going to analyze it. There's your fingerprint EQ for my reference. I'm going to use this drum break here, which is the kick. I'm going to just preview it for you. So that's the sound that I'm looking for. I'm going to drag and drop that here. Notice that I did this on purpose. They're kind of similar. And this is because when I go down here to the parameters, you're going to see what happens. And now I go to EQ curve here at the very end and I press the match. And this is the resulting EQ curve that matches both of the fingerprint EQs that were analyzed in these two steps. So now I'm going to turn this off, play again the normal loop. Now I'm going to turn it on. And there's a difference of the resulting match EQ curve. But it's not doesn't stop there. You can come here and uh, change these parameters a little bit. I'm going to do that now. So we can smooth and you can see the smoothing graphically. It changes, obviously changes your, 
your sound a little bit the channel link is just the stereo the left and right how they are linked together nothing happens it doesn't really differentiate between the two because they're so close together and this is good because you can see also the graph of the result and your your current and your reference you also have other options here in the gear that i'm not gonna use you can also fade the extremes but you have to go for that to the eq result and there you can set your different fades your bands and it will serve just like a like a band filter and let you tweak a little bit more and that's pretty much it that's pretty much all you have and to answer or to elaborate on what i said in the beginning why this is one of logic pro X's best kept secrets is because you can use this at any level you can use it at the sample level at the instrument level at the sub mix level like this would be right like a little loop or you can use it at the mastering level so let's say you want to create something a beat for example that it's you use for inspiration something else some other material and you want it to sound or have a particular tone close to that reference or that inspiration, then you can use this not only to get a close, but also to pace yourself and compare yourself. Compare your original mix to what you ended up doing with the Match EQ, and then it's going to help you indirectly identify what you need to work on when mixing and mastering and all that good stuff. So that I hope that, you know, you 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 find this useful it's pretty simple to to use in my opinion and you can use it on anything right so with that i'm gonna leave you for now thanks as usual if you are watching me for the first time make sure to subscribe on youtube like on facebook follow on twitter and instagram i'll see you next week peace out people